Man, I love that intro music. Guys, welcome to Prepper Talk Radio. This is our weekly live. I'm Scott, and we got Paris and Shane in the house. How you doing, fellas? Doing excellent. fantastic. Excellent. We got fantastic and excellent. This is this is a great day. Good day. We, as most of you know, we record an episode before we go live, so it gets us jazzed up, hyped up, ready to go. And these are the nights that I look forward to probably most in the week. Talking to you guys, talking about prepping, talking about what's going on in the world. And tonight we're going to talk about what the heck is going on economically. Uh, if you've watched the news, if, you, if you've gone shopping, you know that uh, a can of tomato soup is up 90% from this time last year. Uh, and you're, and you're wrong, Scott. It's only up 3.8%. 90. <laughs> Depends on the brand you buy. And here's, here's the interesting fact. Uh, Walmart... Gross profit for the 12 months ending January 31st of 2024 was up $157.983 billion. And they're saying that the number one reason for that increase was because of the price hikes on great value brands. Wow. Price hikes. Not be, They didn't say it was inflation. They just said price hikes. Yeah. Blame it on the They're company. not going to use the inflation word, right? Yeah. Well, and it's not because they're not going to use... The inflation words, it's not inflation causing the problem. They're price hiking. They're just gouging. Corporate price, corporate price hikes. And that's been happening across the board. And so we're watching literally corporations all over America devaluing and destroying the dollar. I mean, we it's been crazy. So, and what's funny is, is you guys, Paris, you shared a video with us from Glenn Beck talking about what's going on with quantitative easing finances um, had a fantastic interview um, but here's the craziest thing uh, he had I wrote the notes down I can't remember his name all of a sudden he had a Mr. Richard Vornan who is the father of quantitative easing mm -hmm. that was already shared in our group so guys if you are listening and you're not in our group you need to be in our group to see a lot of the cool stuff that's coming up we talk about this all the time. Go to Emergency Prep and Self-Reliance. Join us. Get in there. Share what you're learning. Learn with us as we share a bunch of different stuff. It's, it's fantastic. But also get involved by getting yourself better prepared. We've got resources at PrepperTalkRadio.com. Free downloads. Get your bug out bag kits. Put together your 72 slash 96 hour kit. 72 is just too short. But also check out our friends over at survivalfrog.com use the code prepper talk and save 10 percent on anything there my favorite is their bivy bags and their food it's phenomenal you can also get things like lion energy so with that knowing that our dollar's not stretching as far knowing that things are going awry let's talk the economic crash that we're all in spiral the spi the, the slow death spiral right <laughs> Absolutely yeah, correct. That is that is truly what's happening. But historically, the, this isn't noticed or written about or talked about until even years after whatever event it is, right? They look back, oh, yeah, it actually started this date. And rather than when they when any particular commentator uh, mentioned it or said, so, so, it, it, it typically starts far uh, before we actually can notice it in the economy right it's yeah. it's happening underneath underneath all the all the news you just don't see it unless you're really paying attention well it's interesting too is like we we talk about we've talked about this a lot the creature from jekyll island i read that book a couple of years ago that was a hard hard read because it's very heavy content but also very intellectual a lot of big words that i don't normally speak or say or try to even read but it was interesting because when you pair the two things together, like quantitative easing, right? The future from Jekyll Island, which is the central bank systems, the IRS uh, is attached to it, but the Fed is the creature, right? It is mm -hmm. the lie of the banking world. And what's interesting is then you compare it to the, what just happened in this podcast with Glenn Beck. They're talking about CDBCs. And what's funny is that they're like, oh, it's this new money system or new money strategy and did you guys catch the point that they were talking about where they said 
that only I think it was three percent of new money in the market comes from the Fed's printed money. It, real money, yeah. The fiat, yeah. the actual actual physical currency is only three percent of the money supply. Yeah, and it's, you can't say real money, right? Real currency, physical. Well, the, yeah, the the dollar physical, bills and stuff. Physical, cash. physical. Yeah, sorry, physical currency is three percent of the money supply. Where does the other ninety-seven percent come from? Did you guys catch it? Yeah. Bank. Digital. Digital currency. So BDCs. And for those of you listening, you're like, what the crap? Like, ben banks create money by lending. And if I, if I remember right, they create currency by lending. They create a false digital currency. They call it digital money. But they create that by lending money. And they can lend, I think right now, it's 10 times what they have in assets. Well, it's it uh, at one point it might have been. I don't point. know what it is now for sure. Right, it, it used, used to, to seven banks times. used to have a reserve. Used to have to have a reserve, which it you know uh, past couple of years it was twenty percent, uh, or excuse me, uh, yeah twenty percent. Then it went down to ten percent, and now it's a, a no reserve banking system. Oh, there's banks no reserve. Don't have to hold any reserves. Yeah, well, since the bailouts and stuff like that, they right, kind of yes. made some rules change. I do, I wasn't sure about that myself, but that's that's that's. <laughs> it yeah. seems like that's what they would do. For years, as a financial planner, I would tell people, I said, "Look, why why are you giving your money to the bank?" Uh, and they're like, "Well, it's in savings." Well, no, it's not actually. You're actually lending your money to the bank. Mm -hmm. The bank is paying you an interest rate for that loan, which is point zero ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to take that money and they're going to reinvest it back out into the market. And they're going to take, and I use money loosely just so that we have some point of reference here. It's not really money. They're going to take your deposit and then they're going to lend it back out at what Scott used to be 10 times the, the actual value. Um, and they make eight, nine, 10%, 12%. I remember watching a video it was really or I, I saw a picture somebody took a picture of a bank and on the left side of the bank it said savings accounts i mean they call them savings accounts but they're really lending it's really yeah. a loan you you lend mm -hmm. them money and they get to legally call it a savings account somehow anyways they it said savings accounts like one percent i don't know i'm using numbers here not that weren't probably the actual picture but it said well, savings account one percent and then over on the other window of the bank on the other side of the door it said loans ten percent Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's literally the difference. Mm -hmm. they, that nine percent is why their lobbies are bigger than our houses. It's called arbitrage. It, it, they mm -hmm. take, they borrow at one percent from you, and then they'll go lend it out at ten percent, and they get to keep the difference. I mean, that's the concept. I know it's not the actual right. numbers. Some economist is gonna be like, "But Paris, that's not how it actually." No, just conceptually, can we all agree that's conceptually yeah. how it works? And so yeah, that's sure. something that uh, not a lot of people know. And that's exactly what banks are doing. Now, what's cool is I actually heard this economist say that very thing. And I was like, so I wasn't crazy all these years telling people that they were given, a, they were, it was actually a loan because it is in law. And that's what the other thing too, is that, I mean, we, we're not here to get into the legal system and boy, that's a rabbit hole, but um, <laughs> right. the whole, you know, if you look at Black's law book, what is actually happening in the law is your signing a promissory note over to the bank as a loan and they're taking it as a loan and putting it on their books as a loan that they owe you and then they're going to take the it's not even money because where did it come from like you didn't actually deposit anything like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's all digital and then they go out and they put it into the marketplace and um, that's where we're seeing the problems is that when they take that digital currency and they use it for consumption it burns it off and that's why we have inflation if they would take that digital currency and put it into productive assets businesses innovation yeah. research and development things of that nature our economy could actually grow at 10 to 15 percent actually consistently and he proved it in this in this audio that that in this uh in, um glenn beck's podcast he showed that there's it's been proven in hist historically that communities economies that have done it that way have grown so it's pretty yeah, awesome. Going over, going over to our emergency prep and self-reliance page, and you can see some of these clips that have been shared by some of our, our members over there. So yeah, it's really it's it's interesting because it's like the entire monetary system that's been created, the farce, if you will, is in another term, it's all securities. They're mm -hmm. securing a signature and saying, Oh, that signature is now worth 
Oh, for you want this car? Minutes. It's worth twenty grand. Oh, you got a signature. Oh, now now it's worth four hundred thousand dollars because you're going to pay back this house, right? And and then they rate us on it. That's what the credit whole credit score system is. It's like how how valuable is your signature? How how durable is that signature? Oh, you're you're going to get a seven hundred twenty score. So that's that's good. That's a that's a good signature. We'll give more money for that signature. We'll give you well, a better th- rate for that signature. But it's all smoke and mirrors. Another thing that he talks about pretty uh, clearly in this, um, the, and he's the, you know, the father of quantitative easing. He's a world-renowned economist. Like, dude is, a, is legit. So we'll put a link in the description to it so you guys can go watch it yourselves because it's totally worth the watch. One of the things he, I want you to pay attention to when he says in there, he says that we already have, like Scott said, BDCs, which are bank digital currencies. So why do we need a CBDC, a central bank digital currency? And then he goes on to say, if you look at the communist communist manifesto, one of the things that they say in there for and it's all throughout Marxism, the whole situation there is they want to centralize the banks. Now, any economy that wants to grow and actually have the most efficient growth will decentralize the banks and allow banks to kind of compete. And then all the banks kind of work in their local areas, regional banks. Uh, and national banks, state banks, and they all work together to create this e- economic progress. Well, when you centralize all the banks, you have one commander, a chief, so to speak, dictating everything that all the banks can do. And now it becomes very stiff, very corporate, very uh, not flexible. And the economy actually shrinks as that control comes in. And he says almost word for word, he says the reason why they're doing it is so they can control the people. And I'm just like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Lights are going off. Flags are waving. I'm just like, dude, I want to have this guy on our show. <laughs> well, just in the, the past few weeks, um, I think it was not last week, week before, uh, Bricks actually came out and said that within 12, 24 months, we will have our own digital currency. Now, of course, that is likely just to be uh, to transact between the BRICS countries as their own currency, not necessarily a currency for the people. Uh, but who knows where it'll go from there, right? It, everything, it, the camel gets his nose under the tent and, and then it, the whole camel comes in, right? So mm-hmm. we know that banks, uh, we know the Federal Reserve's working on, we know that the, the uh, uh, other, other countries, other governments are working on, other central banks are working on their own central bank digital currency, I'm sure, right alongside of the BRICS. Uh, and that will be for the people, right? And oh, yeah. uh, well, and, my understanding uh, no wasn't BRICS established. I mean, two multiple reasons, but wasn't it established to kind of create a gold-backed group? They had mentioned that the, to yeah, pull it off the petrodollar. I think that's one of the uh, that was one of their tenets when they originally kind of announced their their um, their ideal. But I don't. I mean, you know how they all do. They just say, right. oh, yeah, we're doing it for this, but we're really doing it for that, you know. Because this is all 100%, like, this new digital currency that they're doing is 100%. It's a blockchain cryptocurrency. That's what they're basically building. Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah. everybody and their dog right now is building their own cryptocurrency. Yeah. Well, the idea is to tokenize everything so that they can mm-hmm. actually, when you tokenize it and you digitalize it like that, you literally, like this economist went through the process whereby he shares their desire, how they can control your spending and they can take money away or they can give you more or they can say, they can actually literally program the money to be able, you can only buy certain things and have certain um, resources that you can exchange with for it. And so he just, all those so to speak, the conspiracy theory fears that are out there. This mm-hmm. dude, who's a world-renowned economist, <clears throat> like that's true. It's all true. And basically, you know, and he says it in a way that's very thoughtful. And so that's why another reason why, you know, obviously we're trying to articulate it in our best way. But yeah, don't, go go listen to it from the source too. Yeah, you know, imagine a world without cash, right? When everything goes digital, there will be no cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be done away with. And that's where you need to have gold and silver for bartering, right? Because uh, there will be no privacy whatsoever with any kind of digital currency. And I, and I want to make the distinction, you know, between currency and money. Uh, J.P. Morgan said it perfectly himself. The banker of all bankers said only gold and silver are money. Everything else is credit. 
-hmm. And that is also enumerated in the Constitution as well. Only gold and silver coins shall be money. Yep. Money, 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 not currency. Currency is what our dollars are, what our what fiat currencies are. You can call it money because, like Paris was saying, people, that's what they refer to it as, and that's how they know it. But I think it is very important that we talked previously about using words properly, using the right words. So I'm very much a stickler on saying, okay, the U.S. dollar is currency. It's not money. Gold and gold and silver are money. So let's you know, try and dis- distinguish those when we're talking, right, to, to – to, to enlighten and to make aware and to distinguish what is true money and what really has wealth, what is wealth, what is, uh, is real money and not a debt note because our dollars represent debt, not wealth. Well, and mm-hmm. I would take it a step back even further. Gold and silver <clears throat> have zero value to me. Let me explain. I can't eat gold and silver <clears throat> i can't eat a dollar bill i can't eat a check you gave me i can't eat that zelle or venmo transfer you sent to me right what i can do though is i can take real resources or my time and energy and trade those for real resources right we just use that instrument the fiat currency or the gold and silver or maybe you're bartering mm-hmm. food or other items in you know now or in shtf like that's what gives it value. And right now there's so many things that are removing value from that fiat currency so fast that, yeah, we're in that, that downward spiral. It's funny because you look at maple trees and they have those little pod seeds, right? You pull the seed and you throw it up and it's a little <coughs> helicopter that floats down. That is what I see happening to our economy. The little it, helicopter seeds. I love that. It's just like, <laughs> It's, falling it's down not, to the ground. I don't think it's going to be a big bang crash. Like, I think it's just we're going to continually circle the drain, and and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And so you have to be implementing systems and tools to be more resilient and more self reliant, both individually, but also as a family and a community. Okay, so the guy Glenn Beck actually asked this guy uh, towards the end. One of the last questions he asked him was so what can we expect moving forward? Is this thing going to fully collapse and we're just going to be all, you know, where we're all going to hell in a handbasket, but at least the handbasket's decorated kind of, you know what I mean? So <laughs> the idea, it was, he said, look, that our system is very robust and their design is a course to contain, to get to the point where they're controlling. But what he also likened it to an example of, and I think Glenn Beck did this too, was that, um, it's like you, you put all the money on the table and the gambling and the house takes it all. And then you have more money you put on the table and the house takes it all. Mm. You put more money on the table and the house takes it again. At some point, you're going to run out of money and the house is going to have it all. And that's what we're looking at here. It's so that's the care that we need to take. We need to be awake and aware and we need to figure things out before we get there because we can, I mean, you know, do you get spiritual for real quick and scriptural? It's it's in the scriptures. And when God says something, you can't really change what he says. Yeah. But can we maybe um, at least put up a good fight and, and maybe be the light all the way to the very end? Sure. So I think we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to know what's going on economically. And we need to personally, the best way I feel like to get, um, yeah, great. The stock market, this company is doing this quantitative easing, all that. But what are you doing with your income and your expenses? What is what is your savings account look like? What is your investment in? Are you investing in the, um, the right kinds of things? So make sure that your personal finances are in order so that you're not running this whole thing up. You know, you're, you're not adding to the problem. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's something we all need to be aware of the macro level stuff, but act like what's that old saying? Think globally, act locally. And that's what I think is the same thing with our finances. Well, like Mike was saying here, I just put his comment up here on the screen for those of you on YouTube. Uh, our system, for, this is what I see is happening right now. What happens when, like, for example, uh, in, in the company I work for, when they're making changes, they made a bunch of changes to our system behind the scenes. We're going to switch to an entirely different operating system for, for their back end and for the front end. We switched over to Salesforce. And so all these changes were being made in the background, right? On a duplicate servers. And then all of a sudden, what they do? They just 
They just plugged it in, switched us over uh, one night while we were asleep. And the next morning we're running a whole new system and it's running in the background. We don't even know it, right? You don't hardly even see what's happening except for there's all these little things, little things they have to fix while we're in the motion, right? Oh, this, this uh, feature isn't working on my, my system. And then I put in a help desk call and they, and they realize, okay, we, we need to fix that. Those are really the only kind of things that I've seen when those types of transitions happen. I believe this is happening in the background. Part of these CBDCs is the US dollar, like Mike was saying there, is mostly, it's a mostly digital anyway. Like you're saying, only 3% of all the, uh, the dollars out there are, have been actually printed and exist as cash. So I think this transition is happening now in the background and at some point, and maybe this has already happened. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's already happened. They've already switched it over into another system and it's actually running in the background, this new digital system, which like I say, it's mostly digital anyway. And then all that really needs to happen is, is to pull the cash out. So I think this transition is going to be very smooth, very seamless, uh, and maybe not even noticeable at all. Yeah, and he mentioned quite a bit. Of, he quite quite a few times. He said the only real reason why they were able to accel accelerate their timeline was because of the 2020, the C word, um, the mm -hmm. C O. Yeah. Just for yeah. for YouTube, I mean, you're going to use a uh, different language here. The uh, the the Cerveza uh, virus, and so. Yeah you have to realize that the American people were resilient enough and they were patriotic enough that they're like, no, we're not going to go with this. We're going to fight against it. We still you know, want to stick to what the constitution says. And all of a sudden you create this crisis and everybody start to panic and fear sets in. And then you mass psychosis and mass uh, uh, psychology comes in. There's a word, I can't remember what it is, but um, anyways, the point is, is that from that point forward, it was like, right. I think Glenn Beck said that on there that the numbers were, I don't know if this is true or not, but he said something like 50,000 people right now in the world have the ch a chip in their hand to be able to do d transactions like that. And that's a, and it's growing rapidly. And so that kind of tipping point that the ability to kind of move that forward and move the, their football down the field, so to speak towards our end zone is, um, came from that whole psyop that whole fear mongering psyop that's come that was that was mm -hmm. you know honestly well played guys you know we uh we let it happen we let it roll out we should we now and and here's where i think they went too far and he even says the the guy the economist says this in there he says where we went too far is they they don't think they expected america to wake up and realize wait a minute what and so now they're like crap what can we how are we going to you know, we did get some major headway, but I think we're going to have some problems moving forward from here. So let's keep the keep the pressure on, guys. We got to um, we got to do what we can in our area, but then also realize that uh, it's up to us to, you know, keep our family safe. Well, it's like it's funny because, like, if you look at, like, all the auto groups right now, they're in panic mode because auto sales are way down. Right. It's going to fix pricing in that industry. Why is that happening? Because we're not putting up with it anymore. There's still people that are like, oh, I've still got to, I have to have a brand new car. Or they might be crazy and go, oh, I need to go get that Ford Lightning electric. Oh, that's going to be awesome. What? And pay over sticker price. Right. And what's funny is, is like, if you go to China, they've got thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of electric vehicles they can't sell. Yeah. And so they're all all this money's flowing into this investment group to buy and build these things, but then those companies crash because there's no market for it. Right? Look at what we can do with our dollar. Look at what we can do without our dollar and look at what we can do with our community to become more resilient. Like I saw the phrase home is where the rebellion begins. Right? Home home is where the other one was home is where the renegade grows. That's why they were trying to destroy the family, right? So if we can build stronger families, we can build people who don't require the economic system. Notice how I said ick, economic system that they've created because it's icky, it's gross, it's bad. Work on barter, work on trade, work on things where you don't need their system. I'm, I'm getting more and more excited about trading through local newspapers and utilizing the marketplace out there. 
to find things that I need and want. And I'm trying to buy less new and more <clears throat> love, loved and used, right? Most of my prepping gear that I'm buying anymore is used. I'm garage sale in it. I'm rotating value within my community. And that is one of the simple little things you can start doing to better improve your situation. Like they're expecting shortages because of the economic changes, right? All, I can't remember who posted this the other day, but there was a uh, news came out about uh, Tyson laying off a whole bunch of people and replacing them with illegal immigrants, right? There's also news about uh, the egg cartel in America uh, that they're expecting a huge shortage because of the bird flu uh, issue that's going on. They've just had to pull a whole bunch of chickens across America. Yeah. But we're going to have uh, in, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have on a uh, show a guy who's pretty well versed in what's going on in the food supply. And um, he's got a really cool solution. So um, subscribe and stay tuned because we're going to uh, bring him on and have an interview with him here coming pretty soon. We'll, we'll make more of an announcement, but that I think we'll talk more about one of the solutions he has is making sure that you're buying local as much as you can and buying American made and American manufactured. And we've talked about that on our show with our um, Patriot, um, sorry, the uh, mylibertybox.com forward slash pepper talk. So it's just it's really kind of, there's some things we're going to have to do. There's some changes we're going to have to make in the way we consume and the way we um, save and prepare because the the, um, the world is changing and we got to change with it in order to adapt. And that's part of being a prepper and being prepared is that, hey, I'm seeing the writing on the wall. Let's um, let's go with the flow and be ready. That's that, What's that old saying? Keep your head on a swivel because you, you got to stay loose. Yep. You got to stay, stay you know, frosty. Stay frosty. You got to stay ready because when change happens, you got to be ready to make the pivot. Well, it's funny, like we were, we joked about this a few, I don't know, probably 10 episodes, I should say few, 10 or 10 or 12 episodes ago, we talked about, you know, creating swivel heads instead of bobbleheads, focus on being a swivel head, you know, well, we'll be checking around, see what's going on, stay safe, stay, stay ready minded. And I just think it's funny because there's so much <laughs> fluff and marketing garbage and jargon out there to confuse people about what they're really doing with what the dollar or what their money or what their fiat is. Right. And this is the saddest thing I've seen. I think people were asked if they would rather have a chocolate bar. Oh, there's my son. If they would rather have a. just found the yummiest marshmallows. And if you heard that, he just found the yummiest marshmallows ever. What I was going to say though, I'll give these to you in a second. Don't eat them all. <laughs> this is going to be a problem. Good. The funniest thing is, is I saw people questioned on the street, would you rather have this chocolate bar or this silver coin? Mm -hmm. Everyone chose the chocolate bar. Every single one. They I, they asked like 30 people. Mark Every this. single one. That is how confused most people are about what's really happening, what really has value. Well, that's a nice lead into gold and silver because uh, obviously those of us who are watching see what's been happening uh, in the last couple of weeks, last you know, three, four weeks, you know, months or so, uh, that gold has gone up significantly. So is silver. Silver's pushing on uh, resistance levels and had broken through those and, and then just going to continue higher, I believe anyway, and same with gold. But it's not being talked about in the mainstream news. Nobody's really talking about it. The retail investor really isn't buying into this yet. It's the banks. It's uh, well, if you the consider, large. If you consider that gold is a hedge against inflation and tracks with inflation, the fact that gold jumped so much just shows you how much the dollar lost. Yeah, and before and before the inflation statistics came out, right? So. It's yeah. predicting the future, right? It's telling you really what's going on. I mean, gold right now is twenty three forty six. Are you kidding me? Right now, twenty three hundred. When has gold been twenty three hundred? I haven't. I don't remember. It was in the twenty three sixties, twenty three seventies earlier this week. You know, it was up. Silver was up ten percent last week alone. Uh, and so, yeah, it's. I don't see any stop to this. You know, I think it's mm. going to go much much higher. Make well, sure you and, make sure you go to alpinegold.com forward slash ref forward slash prepper talk thank you 
<laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is, it, it's just funny because we are literally circling the drain. Like, it's built to circle the drain. Go read The Creature from Jekyll Island and learn about the history of money because money is, is real and works. As soon as they go to a fiat currency, it always crashes and that cycle stays the same. Lifespan. And what's amazing is, is we're late. Like, we should have already had a major crash and lost the entire use of the dollar. It's been propped and pushed and forced along. And here we are going, why are my food bills 10 times higher than they were two years ago, right? I, I buy the same stuff, but the bottles are getting smaller. The price is still going up. The bags of, of potato chips are getting smaller. And they're instead of half full, they're now a third full. There's more air, right? All these things are indicators of we're in a crashing dollar. Another another example of that, Scott, is that uh, I don't know if you saw about what's happening in California right now with the increase in minimum wage to twenty dollars. Um, some lady, uh, some TikTok went viral about how some lady looked at um, a value menu forty piece chicken nugget. It was twenty five dollars for, and they're like, and it was forty piece chicken nugget and two fries, and she's like, they wouldn't even throw in a drink. At least get a medium drink, will ya? You know, like so that. The reality is, is welcome to economics, bro. Like you increase the wage, you have to pay for the wage. The way that businesses aren't going to take a loss. So the way that they pay for the wage, the requirement is to increase the prices of the goods and services so that they can have the cash flow to be able to pay the required wage. If we all lived on $5, if you're, it, it's not about $20 an hour. It's not about $10 an hour. It's about what you do with the money after you earn it. In fact, I just did, I'm going to be releasing a video on my, um, on my financial channel this week about, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. And that's mm -hmm. where people get so excited. Like, Oh, if I make more money, I'll be, uh, that'll answer all the problems. Okay. Yes. It can answer a lot of problems, but it's not going to answer all of them. If you're blowing it every, as an example on a tree, if a tree produces fruit and you consume all the fruit and you don't store anything up for uh, tomorrow, you've, you got no fruit tomorrow because you've just ate it all. That's the same thing with the income is that if you spend all of your money, what have you got to show for it? Nothing. And you're going to, you're going to be freaking out and you're going to have anxiety and you're going to have stress and you're going to all the problems that come from being an idiot with your money. Well, it's funny because you can never budget yourself into prosperity. You can budget yourself into peace, right? And and lose lose the fear of oh, where do I have enough to get by? But prosperity comes with making better choices. Mm -hmm. And you can't you and can't getting, reduce getting, your expenses work. into wealth. You do have to grow, and you do have to earn more money. The, the, the discipline to get yourself in a place where you're financially set, having more money coming in than what's going out is critical you there's so many people that make kind of money in fact i've talked with several millionaires buddies of mine and i was like look how many of your friends who were once millionaires like you are no longer millionaires because they made poor choices they they bought the boat they bought the house they tried to keep up with the joneses they wanted to look cool they wanted to look rich they were fake rich and mm -hmm. like so many people will make such they think they're rich, they get all this money and then all of a sudden they make poor choices and now they're back where they started like like the whole idea of the lottery, you win the lottery within three to five years. Most people who win the lottery are broke again or filing for bankruptcy. That's that's the reality of uh, people who aren't wise with their money and and being in a mentality of preparedness, a mentality of resilience, of discipline like we have, like our listeners, like you guys who are listening. That's how that's it. That whether it's finances, whether it's physical, whether it's health, whether it's, you know, food storage, what just skill sets, whatever you're doing, you're, you're resilient. You're, you're powerful. You're strong. You're capable. You're ready to go. You're anti-fragile. We've talked about that so many times. Anti-fragility. I love it. And we got that from uh, cash Valley prepper years ago. He's over at uh, survivopedia. If you want to read his content, fantastic resource, uh, kind of an almanac or uh, encyclopedia of prepping 
love, love, love that guy. What's funny is, is in our in our chat right now, like it's getting it's blowing up all over the place. Talking about the market, talking about the Fed, talking about getting wheelbarrows so you can get money to go buy a loaf of bread, right? That that's you'll need a wheelbarrow just to be able to go out and get it. So stockpile wheelbarrows because people are going to need them soon, right? Well, that that's based on the story from uh, Weimar Germany, where uh, the uh, the uh, the German what is it called the the the, the mark the, the had had uh, inflated so much they print, printed so many of these that it took an entire the, the that an individual took a wheelbarrow full of of their currency to the store to purchase groceries whatever and came out and found that the currency was dumped on the ground and the wheelbarrow was stolen. So that's where that story of the wheelbarrow comes from, right? The wheelbarrow that, had more value awesome. than the currency that was in it. And so, so Mike is, you know, is asking questions about uh, why gold, why not the stock market? And, you know, I've done better in the stock market than gold. And, you know, there's definitely some truth to that, but, uh, and this is a very long conversation, which we don't have time for, but, uh, but yeah, Mike, that stock wheat then. Yeah, absolutely. Stock, physical things. And that's why I like gold. I like silver. I, I don't trust the stock markets. I don't trust. And I do my best to try and understand them. And they still make no sense to me. But having something physical in my hand that preserves, there, you know, there, to me, there's basically no risk to holding precious metals in my hand. So uh, precious metals, precious metals will track with inflation. So if you're going to hold cash, hold it in gold and silver. If you want to invest for growth, because gold doesn't grow, that's the thing. Gold does the fact that the gold went up is proof that the dollar went down. That's how it works. Whatever the gold does, the dollar does the opposite. And that's why we're sh saying that the economies and the dollar is on its way out is because as gold increases, the dollar decreases. But stocks, you can invest and they can actually grow in value. They increase in value. So it, it is different. Mm -hmm. You're not investing in gold. You're maintaining your purchasing power and you're, you're storing how do I say it? Your your storage of value, your storage of wealth is preserved in gold and silver and precious metals. But if you want to grow and have compound interest work in your favor, you do need to have a business, real estate or stocks or some other investments that actually is an investment like that. That's the difference between um, precious metals and, and a traditional investment. Precious metals just track with inflation. So your purchasing power doesn't diminish and stock, other investments actually grow your assets and your net worth but for how long is that going to hold hold on right that's the big question well, the other how much is, longer is that model well, going to work in a capitalist society because we're in a capitalist market right now capitalism is the only place realistically where you can have growth like that and that's why our economy has done so well and so i mean when china changed over and started doing socialist capitalism they did their little version their economy is you know, we see where that's taken them they're now the contender for the world economic power you know they're the un or whatever it is is, is on track to be but it's well, also i think the brics whatever the brics come up with that might be the contender for the replacement of the dollar once the world reserve currency replaces but but also china, of, the growth in china is from from printing from debt and the same thing in the u.s mm -hmm. though all of the growth we've seen in the past 20 plus years is and really from since the dollar was taken off the standard and dollars were printed, currency was printed, that's where the growth is unfortunately coming from. It's coming from from counterfeit money, from you know, currency. And so that's where I'm gonna argue a little bit with you there. It's yes, you've been able people have been able to increase their their net worth in dollars, right? But but again, with it, with inflation, what are dollars gonna get you in the future? Right. It, the dollar is losing value. Gold is holding value. I think what we're going to see here, because debt is so massive that gold is going to catch up to that and its growth is going to be spectacular. I don't know how, how else to say it at this time. Well, the largest two sectors of China's economy, their growth, their GDP are capital formation, which is making fake money really right it's mm -hmm. it's it's expansion of over leveraging of false economic value and number two exports goods and services if if we hadn't outsourced all of america's production pretty much 
to China, the only way they make money at that point, because agriculture is less than 7% there, the only way they're making money in international trade is services. They're making money by f puffing up and faking their own dollar, which what is the U.S. doing? We're puffing up and making our fake money, our fake fiat currency. Yeah, we're going to crash. That's what all the companies are pushing towards. But yeah, I, I think BRICS, well, I think you're right. I think BRICS, whatever they come up with is what the world's going to move to. Well, at the beginning and, of the show, we talked about how that guy, the economist on the, sh on, on the podcast, Glenn Peck, said that if you're going to use those promissory debt notes for the building up of R&D, for the building up of, of uh, actual in, um, inventions and moving the economy forward, then that's, a, that's positive and sustainable. If you're using it for consumption and the purchase of homes and the purchase of cars and the purchase of credit cards and, and all that stuff, that's where we're that's that's the biggest threat to the economic um, system is that the when we get overloaded in consumer debt, we're we're poised for destruction and for for a fall, and that's where we're at. Is that the we've gotten so lazy and so consumer oriented and so pleasure seeking that um that's that's how it works what is that old saying about good times bring um hard i don't remember the saying scott hard, you know times, hard times create hard men right or or vice versa rough or rough men rough men create good times good times create soft men soft men create hard times and i think there, i'm missing a group in there but it's like yeah we're in soft people making all the choices Mm -hmm. and they're making horrible times and so we have to be more resilient so as we're wrapping up tonight's episode like guys what can you do to be more resilient against this well diversify further get into gold and silver but only if you've already got your preps figured out mm -hmm. right diversify first into food storage into right your your full metal jacket your your hollow points your mm -hmm. you know, those precious mm -hmm. metals first, right? Yeah. Um, in your water, water filtration, water storage, your fire, right? Your shelter. Then look at your gold and silver. And and with that, like holding it in hand is, is the best option. If you've got 401ks and IRAs and things you can't just do what you want with, you need to at least look at the other option of moving those funds. And you can move those to our friends over at ITM Trading. If you've been watching the news, if you've been listening to today's conversation, it's all about how are the dollars losing value faster than ever. And the way to hedge is with precious metals. Check out our friends over at ITM Trading. Go to learn.itmtrading.com forward slash prepper talk radio. Or you can call them. They'll be happy to give you a consult. It's 1-866-257-0481. Free uh, consultation for anybody. Okay, I just posted a comment here, and then YouTube rejected my comment. Did you see that? No. This usually means they think it's... Oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Interesting. The so that was real. real. That's right. Guys, guys, real. Make sure you are doing everything in your power to stay resilient, stay ready-minded, and focus on things you can do. Barter and trade with your locals. Find local suppliers for everything you, you're using. Go to the farmer's markets. That's the way to fix the problem. Start local, start start small, and get responsible for your household. Any other final thoughts, guys? Well, I was just going to say I totally agree 100% with that. The other, um, Just remember that we need to pay attention to what's going on in the economy. We need to be paying attention to their agenda, and we need to fight against it as much as possible. Remember that... Um, the word has been more powerful than the sword and we need to fight first what we can't defend with the, our words and our um, declarations and our um, emails and letters and phone calls to our governments. You know, eventually it might get kinetic and I'm using the word kinetic. Look that up if you want to, but I don't want mm -hmm. to say I can't say certain things. So I'm using the word kinetic. And so I just say we need to be aware of what's going on. We need and I say let's reject the chip in our hands. Let's reject the CBDCs when we can. Let's let's go back to. That's one of the reasons why we love goldbacks and we love um, you know cash 
or at least cash equivalents, bartering local trade, local farmers markets, keep your economies going as much as you can. The more that you do that, the less they can take control. So just be aware, be alert and fight where you can. And that's, yeah, my, I guess my, that's my hoorah. Cool. Yeah. I guess my last comment would be, uh, you know, like Mike and others been commenting here, just, just stay out of debt, get out of debt, pay your debts off, mm -hmm. do that quickly. I think that is going to be the key to when things get switched over to CBDCs to ensure that we can remain free, that we can be free. I mean, we're not free now. I mean, we've seen some comments here is we are essentially slaves. We're tax slave. I mean, it's a long conversation, but focus on getting out of debt. And bef again, before you're stocking up, uh, you need your food storage, you need some, some savings. Uh, but yeah, before you maybe save on, on gold and silver, I mean, absolutely personal, but get yourselves out of debt. Um, at least to where, you know, they, and we've had this conversation conversation before. There's good levels of debt and there's bad debt. There's good debt, bad debt. And uh, just make sure that uh, it, now is not the time to go into debt. So get out of it. Yeah, definitely get out of debt. Definitely reduce, reuse, and upcycle your life. And now is the time to start thinking more about the old adage from, from the Depression Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Love Thank it. you, everyone who's participated in tonight's live. It has been awesome. Comments have been fantastic. I uh, wish we could sh just share more and more and more of it. Thank you for being part of the family. Join us at Emergency Prep and Self-Alliance over in Facebook world, or you can jump on our YouTube and comment, comment, comment. We're, we're live and active on there as well. Thank you for being part of the Prepper Talk Radio family. We are radio. For the ready-minded. Have a good night. See you next week.